Good evening, y'all can see I'm a little short. As Jericho said, I am from Newberry, South Carolina, which means I'm naturally a little country. So um, I'd like for y'all to kind of follow the following thing. If you feel something from the poetry, let it speak to you. I've been in churches smaller than this, so make some noise while you got some time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now given any particular Saturday morning in my childhood, I was usually on a fish pond till about 4 p.m. If that's any of y'all, y'all probably know how much water is a magical place sometimes. How many of y'all have ever heard of the phrase, what would Jesus do? That was never on my mind. <laughs> being a child and being a bit aggravated and consistently frustrated by my own spirit, I found often that my mother and my grandmother's uh, teachings of scripture, as well as spiritual discipline, often came uh, through the context of meditation, which largely meant looking at a body of water for a while to see if something would come. Uh, this is, instead of what, we, what would Jesus do, this is what we wayward do. All spells begin with water. Rod in hand, flick of it against the stinging sky. Mama Nim stir the air to tears. Casting is what they call the girls putting in work round here. And yes, we witches are fishermen. Whip glamours and men's overalls so long as fish rise to the surface mere hours before morning still let us. Believe me, at the edge, we make them levitate. Each saddling our silence as if any noise unweighted would loose a daemon, slick scaled and wide eyed with no bellies by which to bind it. Where I'm from, folk learn conjure early. The kind of favor you pray over a pole for, and what is Greek is still a gospel. Here, Jesus is a sigil with light bread, and there is always a pilot and a piercing before cooking, a struggle so steady, we laugh at our buckets. That is, yes, we flay the fish with care. Cricket fed and fried light, worked to the bone, this how we kill our familiars. There is nothing, then something, something, then nothing. It is wrist work. It is sobering. It is holy. We gather, we murmur, we swallow in worship. Now, in the event that you thought I was naturally a deviant, yes, I am. <laughs> that is to say, I am a little black choir kid that sometimes made a lot of noise, sometimes because I spent most of my time in somebody's church singing a song about Jesus. But given circumstances, this particular poem is not necessarily about that, but a bit of a persona or perhaps a bit of an exploration of persona. Um, y'all from the country, and y'all have somehow made it to Decatur. Y'all celebrating the death of cicadas or not? Back in my day, or back where I'm from, they call them chatteracks because they make a whole lot of noise. This is the choir, or chatteracks. Only thing you need to know is that it starts with a word called hexapod, which means six feet. You take it for what you need it. Hexapod pumps line branches of the choir stand as we brace ourselves for weak spots three by five strong. Fanning its barks with tambourine shells and whatever else from the funeral home, I rock on the edge of old wood. Beads of sweat 
both loosen limbs and the elastic of already falling garters, like sheets, draws, and almost anything unholy, we grunt and stomp, and I know damn well we shake some shit up. We fell a veil rooted in work outdating us, proceed gods with our own flagrant divinities, the dew of white diamond and Sean John dung beetle musking as magnolia. For eons, I, Katie, did, and Mary, don't you whip the Methuselah from the knees of my ensemble and every pew bound to be asking, how we making more noise than them? As they said, molding the Lord's honey and making them look bad. In a word, yes, shaking does the body good. But I will say how I felt it. The dry rot of not dusk and corners of pastors' big lips already annoyed that we even dare to be hollering for Bug Jesus like this anyway. Like, she ain't already up and gave Bug Jesus her best crook-legged praise. Like, she don't need no help. Like, it don't take all that. Like, we out here doing something she ain't asked us in the first place. Like, we trying to get our holy on. So, like the rattling deviants we are, we dig and fill each mouth with surprise and invert our fears into something able to leave anyone shook. We husk, we hum, we don't hear what they call us, noise makers, late comers, back sliders, pillow biters, bull daggers, night crawlers, oh hooligans, oh heretics, oh word warpers, oh whippoorwills, oh morning doves, we sunshine singers, we dewdrop deities, we muses boo, we chatteracks, we lightning bugs, we country babies. We ain't stunned about that. Now, given circumstances, of course, there's some words that got thrown around that last poem. Um, because I'd like to be a little more of a heathen, I'm going to continue. Uh, this is To Be Feral. Uh, for those of you that would like to know, I pondered on the concept of prophecy meditating largely on Daniel 7, in which he kind of sees something come out of the sea and attempts to make use of it. To be feral. In the dream where chimeras emerge from the sea, Daniel fantasizes of water-winged options and I am the beast. Our frames melt into a shifting torrent of limbs. First ten, then fewer, then ten again. An ever change, reminding us we only exist as theory. Once here, briefly, then no longer. In the second half, I trace his dripping, his drowning, the time it takes to write a praying man wet and emptied in the hollows of a thing he calls monster. The work considered to sing yourself well afterwards. In the night, to be feral is to be a possibility. He sleeps and unbound odds bite at both of us. I try to beat them without losing any teeth. He wakes up, and one of mine has gotten looser. So naturally, I'm a teacher. And in the event that you can think about that, well, some of the things that I have to sometimes sit with is the trauma of having been a poet, been exposed to poet, and then having to teach people that have also been exposed to the ways in which poetry gets taught uh, to them. You know, there's a little bit of PTSD. <laughs> now, given circumstances, I'd like to see uh, what English classes you perhaps are going to be triggered by spelling the people in the room. 
This is called spell. I lost the fourth grade spelling bee on the word assign. As such, I circled in rebellion against notions of power every day since. I was warned. No magic could undo the ways in which little things would undo me. I scoffed and felt the sound itch in my ears. Scratch how 45s caught in the jukebox, ma retire to the den, spiral in their filth before arresting the throat of a needle mid group. It dizzied me. Stirred the bits of my making the way lint emerges at the sunset of a dust bunny surrendering to be, once again, a collective of forms. They're not even big, I said of their size. The truths of plurality winding over my head, shifting from dust to vulture flies, eyeing the rot of my humility with grave diggers' patience. Off the record, it spins like this. A slew of rivals, a sob, a choke, a chop down, a corkscrew of buzzard laughter, unstoppering a flood of tears, longing to spew hot against my cheeks. I am humbled, idling against the slow twitch of my dying pride. Looking my maker in their blooded beak, the flush of shame glinting in each multi eye. I blink, watch my kaleidoscoping spiral. I know, I know what this is supposed to be. Know the less lettered revolutions of tiny certainties in full. They belt. I cough, conjure up the word refuse, slowly round it out like death. And lastly, a bit of a piece for the coldness that sometimes comes with poetry as well as the coldness that sometimes comes with receiving poetry. For those of you that dissociate, this is when I made a puppet. Considering Tone and the Peculiar Peoples make me over after Justin Philip Reed, this is when I made a puppet I served my horrors in cold bodies. Got my tens the old way. Divas, horses, orthopterans, any legged sound walked. That happened. I spun and split a virgin cricket. Lay it atop a bustling pyre. Each ant famished ember. Outside smoke and burning core. I know necrosis when I see it. Darkened, I prayed it under, six feet and severed, called up old gods to stop its writhing. Silent, I thrashed both wing pairs as cherubs newly christened. I was fixated, I held grudges. I wanted to sink as that cricket had, lace my legs with rigor mortis, hobble my wrists as drowning nymphs. Each membrane flitted scales of mourning, holy, blessed, dead. The struggle of building a triad, host, house, and surely haunted, without a stitch of dominance, these the versions insisting on slow tremor. Each crack defied rest as ghosts mocking their maker. Each an obol denied a mouth on the boat to glory before becoming a Jordan fairy. I bitched out boys and called me pretty. 
slap their banks till warm and frothing, sopping promise as rivers gushed. Dank and young in missionary, I held my truth the same as church mothers, precise, erect, steady on facing his coming. They came, rowing, riding, not getting off. I found those days anticlimactic, lost my scruples in lip service, taking only what they took. They still won't let me say acceptance. Ask, how does one speak to such violence? Emerge from yonder, charred as Orpheus. Listen. I have control issues. I never thought twice about it. How I pulled a bug to smolder. Legs to poems of their liking. Propped complete. Accord in me. You've all been beautiful. Thank you.